Hi folks, 4WellRC here. I wanted to talk today about uh, not Traxxas uh, Monster Jam trucks, although they're lots of fun, but actually one of the really important things that's in them and all of your RC models, be that cars, boats, planes, whatever, these things. Ball bearings, ball races, bearings, whatever you call them. The things that help the world go round in a nice low friction kind of way. I'm going to split the video into three sections. First is going to be a quick bit of theory about uh, why we have these things, what do they do. And then we're going to move on to how to get them out of your model safely and clean them. And then finally we'll be talking about lubrication and options you've got for that, particularly with regards to waterproofing and keeping the muck out of them. Um, if you're really familiar with RC, you probably know what these are already, so you might want to skip on. Uh, there's a couple of kind of jump links in the description and the video, so you can kind of click through to the uh, cleaning section and click through to the lubrication section. So, bearing 101. Uh, why do we have them? Well, in your RC model, it's going to move along, and unless you've got some kind of, uh, well, even, even hovercraft are going to have things that rotate. Maybe you've got an anti-gravity powered model. Great, you probably don't need bearings, but otherwise you're going to have stuff that goes round. So this is uh, off of this, uh, it's a Traxxas Stampede essentially, but it's a Monster Jam one. Down here on the front and the back we've got shafts. Shafts are going to go round, they need something to hold them in place. This is a, a ready to race, ready to run model, it's uh, out of the box. These come with um, bronze phosphor bushes, not bearings. But the shaft goes through here, it's in place and yep, it can go round. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's quite a lot of scratching noises going on there. That's because these um, bushes are made of uh, so bronze. They are literally just a complete ring of metal. And they're quite soft. And over time, with spinning round, these are going to wear out. They also will score the shaft here. So you're going to end up with a lot of play and uh, a lot of friction. But they are cheap, and that's why you get them on your kind of starter models. If you can afford it, you want to throw all of these away and replace them there's something like this. This is uh, just an old Traxxas uh, wheel bearing. A lot of you have probably seen these already on your models. Um, you've got uh, the blue dust covers. Much smoother. So what's going on inside? Okay. This is uh, off a motorbike. It's a nice big bearing. It's substantially larger than the Model 1. But uh, we can see inside quite easily and see what's going on. So we've got uh, an outer ring of metal. This is called the outer race. And then we've got an inner ring of metal and the inner race. This is why sometimes people call these ball races because in between the outer and inner race you've got a number of metal balls held in place by a metal cage. So ball races and you can see as I hold the outer race and rotate the inner like if you had a shaft in it you can see that the balls are going round and round. Obviously having metal balls rotating and rolling against a metal race is a lot less friction than having just a slab of metal sliding on a slab of metal. So that's the theory, basically um, ball bearings, ball races, all the same thing, we know what we mean. But before we move on to the removal and cleaning section, one thing to note about the two main types you're going to have in your RC model. Now you're either going to have the one I just showed you, which is the uh, rubber sealed uh, bearing like that, or you're going to have one like this, which is a metal shrouded one. Now, what's the difference? Um, quite a lot, actually. These ones are completely sealed. Um, chances are you'll find these might run slightly smoother when they're perfectly clean compared to the rubber ones. There might be a bit of drag from the rubber seal. But the rubber seal does a heck of a lot better job sealing up the bearing. Um, so if you're running on the road with no dust, no muck, or maybe you're up in the air, Metal um, seal bearings, probably fine, but if you're doing anything mucky, anything off-road, sandy, mud, you really want the rubber sealed bearings. Okay, enough theory, let's move on to uh, removal and cleaning. There we go, uh, recently I broke a drive shaft on this. Here's the drive shaft, it's come out now. Uh, it's got a fresh pin in, that's why it's out. So it's a good chance to show you, because I've got to do this, um, I've got to pop the bearings out and give them a clean. Okay, uh, how to get them out? Well, if you don't have the tools, I'd say just don't do it. You know, get, go talk to someone who does have some tools. Don't stab at these with a pair of scissors or anything like that. You're going to cut yourself. Be really careful. Um, first of all, before you start working on your bearings, you make sure your work area is clean and clean these things off with to start with. Um, how you want to clean your RC is really up to you. Um, personally, I like to use uh, stuff like this here. 
This is just a uh, it's a, a bicycle cleaner. It's basically a, a detergent. You could even use washing up liquid if you want to. Whatever you want to clean your RC with. But uh, basically, you've, you've now got to get the bearing out of the holder here. So how are we going to do that? Well, it's best to remove it from the model if you can. It's got bearing on both sides. Now, my recommended technique for this is actually to use a pair of long nose pliers uh, because you, you've got the tapering size here. They're thin at the end and then they get fatter. So you can slide them in and eventually they're going to pick up on the bearing. And I'm literally going to just lever down very slightly and then up very slightly and then down and up and down and up and that will start to loosen off the bearing and then you should find that you can get your long nose pliers into the bearing and just get around the back of it you can see that it's just starting to come off on the edge don't pull all the way that there you want to move around on the bearing and you see it's very slowly coming out and you're spreading the force here you don't want to get the bearing at a nasty angle on the way out there we go. Removal of a bearing. Stage two, I've got the bearing out. I've already given this a brush off um, while it was in the truck with just a normal uh, paintbrush. I brushed all this down to get rid of the dirt. So what do we do now? We need to clean these. Uh, what I recommend is, real simple, put them in some kind of tub. This is an old margarine tub. If you eat pizzas, you get these little things that the sauces come in. Pop them in and then put your cleaner of choice in here. Now, when you're doing this, you are going to get mucky fingers. I'm, I've got um, what's called barrier cream on. You get it from um, car parts shops. Uh, it's a cream that you just rub into your hands. It kind of seals your skin up. I don't like wearing the latex gloves. Um, I find it hard to work on stuff. But, you know, protect your skin. Put some gloves on or put some barrier cream on. So to clean these up, you could use um, something like the, the bike parts cleaner. Uh, you could use something like WD-40. I don't recommend that because WD-40 does attack quite a lot of plastics and rubbers. Something like GT85 could be better, so you could just spray that on and immediately you might be able to see some muck coming out of that bearing. Sluice the bearing round and you've got to get it out. Again, try not to get the chemicals on your fingers too much, so use some tweezers or some pliers or something. And then generous amounts of kitchen towel works well for me. Now there are a lot of ways of doing this, I'm just showing you the way that I've found works well for me. Okay, bearing cleaned. I can put it back in the model now. Uh, um, well, yeah, maybe. It really depends how far you want to go. Um, now I'm running that bearing. It's actually, that feels quite clean. It's been out bashing in the truck for a while, but it's, it's not too dirty. So I could actually um, put this back in the truck now. The thing I cleaned it with actually is a, um, a, a lubricant and cleaner. It's got PTFE in it. So I could put those bearings back in, um, but I would lubricate them differently and also I want to go on to stage two for cleaning. Now imagine this bearing, you're rolling it around, it feels really gritty, really nasty. Um, the only way you're going to really clean it is to remove the dust covers here. Now I have seen some people showing you how this is done on YouTube and then uh, people posting responses saying the thing you showed me I've stabbed myself or I've broken my bearings. Well, I'm going to show you now, um, you know, use at your own uh, discretion. Um, be careful, you can damage things if you're going to do this. So if you're unsure, do not try this. But what works for me is uh, instrument screwdriver, nice fine end. Don't use a knife, you are going to cut yourself with a knife. You'll probably stab yourself with this if you're not careful. But basically you want to poke the uh, screwdriver in the inner edge of the dust seal very very carefully in and under and pop there we go now I made that look easy because I've done this before do practice if you've got some old bearings maybe practice on that there we go in the inner edge again levering underneath and pop there we go they're popped off Hey, I can now get inside um, inside there I give it a good clean I could even get um, get a toothbrush and rub it you know, maybe I've got lots of grit and sand in, give it a good blast with whatever you want to clean it with. So once you've cleaned it, then you can get back to reassembly and lubrication. Uh, at this point, I wanted to show you a little product I've seen recently that instead of having a, a tub, now I found this on, um, so I think I found on Hobby King, I found a lot of stuff on Hobby King recently. Anyway, this is called a bearing shaker, and um, basically it's a plastic pot, but it has this thing in it. I think this is excellent. It's essentially it's a little metal cage, but it's got um, a, a base here that's slightly off of the ground. 
So what you can do is you can get your, your bearing parts, pop them in the middle, and then fill this up with your favourite cleaner. And then any bits of grit are going to be collected on the outside, below where the bearings are sitting. And then you can just pull the cage out, dry it off. Fantastic. Also, it helps to save on your cleaning fluid, which can be quite expensive. If you're going to fill up a tub like this with fluid, it's going to use quite a lot. Anyway, enough on cleaning your bearings. Once you've got some clean bearings, we're on to um, lubrication. Okay, so I now want to lubricate my bearings. Now, there are all sorts of ways you could lubricate your bearings, and it, what you're going to use for lubrication really does depend on um, your application. What do I mean? Well, okay, we've got our balls here, and they need some kind of lubricant. Now, you can either be using an oil or grease, and what you want to use will depend on what you're going to do with your bearings. If you're doing anything that's fairly clean, um, you can get away with using an oil. So I've got uh, various types of oil. Here's a Palmer bearing oil, specific light oil. Light oils are very thin. They have a low viscosity, and that means there'll be less drag from the oil on the balls as they go around. Less drag, less friction, more speed, more battery time. That's great. Thin oils, though, will get thrown off if you're doing anything particularly hard. From an oiling point of view, um, I find what works quite well stuff like this. This is basically just a, a bicycle chain lubricant. This is kind of a good balance between a lightweight, low friction oil and a heavier oil that's going to hold on. Also, you've got a little bit of resistance to water on these things. If you haven't got stuff like that, maybe in your garage you've just got some more three in one. If that's all you've got, that's fine. You lubricate your bearings with that. So you can use oil if you're in a lightweight environment. Uh, obviously, if you're in something like a plane or a helicopter, you're not going to be getting a lot of grit or sand or mud in your bearings, and oil would be fine. But if you're on the road, um, and going off-road rather, chances are you're going to get muck in your bearings. Now, you could still oil them, but I do find if I oil these, even with a, a good wet lubricant, and the dust seals are back on they still get grit in like nobody's business and they aren't going to be very waterproof what i recommend is to use grease now lots of people are going to say oh no grease overpacking friction yeah well you know it's up to you i'm just saying what i recommend now there are lots of different greases out there um different greases for different things um we've got here some grease by a company called castrol there are so many manufacturers out there i'm not going to recommend a particular brand or anything like that this is what's called molly grease, and I'm showing you this because you shouldn't use it. Molly grease is black, and even says on the pot here, ideal for CV joints. Do not use it in your bearings, it's not appropriate. You can use stuff, for example, like um, LM, high melting point grease, this is a lithium based grease, that kind of stuff, that's fine. However, I am a complete convert to marine grease. Um, Marine Grease isn't a particular brand name, it's just a description. In this case, uh, this is a car lube. It's called Aqua Slip Marine Waterproof Grease. You want to be looking for the word marine, so some kind of marine grease. Do have a shop around, you can pay all sorts of different money for these. Why marine grease? Basically because it resists water and uh, helps to prevent corrosion. So what I've found is, and I'm just using this on all of my models, road or off-road, uh, I'll just marine grease the heck out of the bearings. Now, a good way of doing that is if you can get one of these things, a little syringe, you can get this probably from um, like a, a local medical store. They should be able to sell you a syringe. You might even get it with some children's medicine and have a spare one. Try and get a syringe. You can use your grease pot. Grab a lump with your screwdriver. Wipe that into the bearing. It's not an exact science, um, but if that's what you've got, go for it. What I like to do, fill up one of these things with grease always put your cap back on when you're not using your grease by the way you don't want to get grit in there so if you've got a syringe fill it up with your marine grease and then very simply just squirt a thin worm of grease all the way around I've got a bit too much to start with there let's wipe the excess off so that's one side done and then go and get your get your cover pop it back on and then on the other side, again, apply a very thin worm of marine grease all the way around. Now, I'm not injecting it hard. I'm not packing the bearing out. I'm just putting like a thin film on the face of the bearing. Remember not to squirt too much, and you don't want to overpack your bearings if you can avoid it. And again, pop your seal back on. 
the excess is going to squirt out wipe that off as much best you can because that will just pick up grit and there we go we now have a very nice clean lubricated bearing it's got marine grease inside it's going to keep the water out and also that grease is providing a really good barrier from grit um, I've been doing a lot of bashing recently in dry areas and my cars that I had oiled bearings in have all gone gritty and I keep cleaning them since I've been using marine grease they just run and run and I've had dozens of bashing sessions before I had to really go and clean the bearings so there you go I hope that was a useful video for you folks so just to summarize um, bronze bushes if you've got the, any of these in your cars if you really can afford it please do get rid of them get some bull races instead um, when you want to clean it use your preferred um, cleaning product do protect your hands um, gloves or um, barrier cream use whatever cleaner works for you and then when you're doing uh, in-depth cleaning pop off the covers but do be careful try to practice that on some old bearings and finally marine grease is my top tip for good bearing longevity hope that was useful any questions do pop them in the comments and thanks for watching